Dr. Mwame Julde Jaula along with his entourage. Can we give them a warm welcome, please? each and every one of you all. We're going to have a great time. There's going to be a question and answer session and be ready to hear from our Vice President, Dr. Julia Jarno. The remarks by representative of the political parties. First on our list, we're going to call the Regional Chairman of the SLPP North America, Chairman Mohamed Bar. Can you please come to the podium, sir? Thank you. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Uh, Vice President. One country. One people. One people. One country. Your Excellency, Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Jude Jalo. Your Excellency, on behalf of the Sierra Leone People's Party here in North America, 
It is a great privilege for me to welcome our Vice President to this town hall meeting here this evening. On behalf of our region, I greet you, I salute you, and I also want to extend the greetings to our President, His Excellency President Julius Madabu. We are fully in support of the new direction and we continue to support. Your Excellency, your unions at home and in the diaspora are no stranger to your desire to transform our nation from one that is dependent on others for its development to a nation that is capable of not only feeding its own people, but is capable of directing our cause as she moves towards a more equitable and just society, eliminating health and social disparities, and creating a substantial foundation for a better union. Please allow me to also recognize our ambassador, Ambassador Sidiq Abubakarwa. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for working with us as a community.
folks of Yorba her heritage like me, uh, um, I'm the uh, at-large member of the Montgomery County Council. You're in Montgomery County, 1.1 million people. I'm the first African elected in this county. Uh, it's an honor to be here with the Vice President and the Ambassador and all the ministers uh, who are here and all the friends and family and guests. Uh, when I got elected uh, last year, I wore uh, an Ibotta, uh on the stage. I took the oath of office, right? And I stood up there to, for my father who came to this country in 1970 fleeing the Biafran Civil War uh, from Ibadan and, and from Lagos and came here to study like many people did, right? Seeking opportunity. Uh, he stayed here, he never left, uh, like many people do also, right? Here in Montgomery County, we're home to one of the largest African immigrant populations in the United States. If you take the DC, Maryland, and Virginia, we have the largest African immigrant population in the United States. Now, Ethiopians are number one, but depending on the day, Sierra Leoneans are number two or three, to, you know, depending on who shows up with our brothers from Cameroon and Liberia. But West Africa is strong here, um, and, and it's an honor to represent all of you who live here, uh, and I think what the Vice President said is so important. Uh, there are 42 plus million people of African descent in this country, right? And if you take Central and South America, tens of millions more. And we are inextricably connected to the 1.2 plus billion Africans. And we need each other to succeed if we are individually to succeed. And so having the Vice President here acknowledge the power and the importance of the diaspora is extremely important because we need each other to thrive. I don't think it's an accident that he's here uh, 400 years after the first documented slaves were brought to this country in 1619 to Hampton, Virginia. Uh, and I remind my black American brothers and sisters here that those people that got off those ships were African. And that they are your ancestors and they're my ancestors. And so we are connected and we must act that way economically, socially, civically, and otherwise. Last thing I'll say and I'll present the proclamation. Uh, we need to establish the sister city relationship with West African countries, and I, and I think Sierra Leone will be on top of the list. We, yes. we have one currently. Yes. We have a current relationship. I'll be in, uh, in Ethiopia this January with our sister city there uh, in Gondar for a celebration, but I am pushing really hard for in the next year or two, and I think this is the time to do it, so I'll say it with the Vice President here, that I would love for us to explore that relationship so that we can strengthen our ties with Montgomery County, with Maryland, with the region. So with that, I, it's my honor to present to the Vice President, I'm gonna briefly read this proclamation, it's very short, and then you can ask your questions. This is from the Montgomery County Council. Whereas the Republic of Sierra Leone is a country on the west coast of Africa situated on the Atlantic Ocean with beautiful white sandy beaches. That's why I need the sister city. I need to get to these beaches. And an abundance of natural resources, which you heard the Vice President talk about. And whereas the Honorable Dr. Jallo is the Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, and whereas the continental African community is the second fastest growing immigrant community in Montgomery County, and the Sierra Leonean community is a vibrant and active community, contributing economically, culturally, and socially to our county. And whereas Montgomery County is proud to be the first jurisdiction in the region to create an African Affairs Advisory Group to address issues pertaining to the African immigrant community. And whereas Montgomery County is honored to host the Honorable Vice President and his delegation on his first official visit to the United States. Now therefore be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland, hereby honors and welcomes Vice President Dr. Jallo, presented this day on the 23rd of November, December, uh, 2019, signed by myself, William Opoyemi Talfi Elavi Juwando. <laughs>
Mr. Will Jawando for that beautiful presentation. And I'm pretty sure when you go to Sierra Leone, you will not regret it. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. So we have another Sierra Leonean that is going to Sierra Leone. We are going to take him from Nigeria. All right. And we'll go to the question and answers, myself and my colleague. And like I said, it's going to be just four questions. Two men and two ladies. We're going to make it equal on that level. Two, two. Okay? And uh, as Fatmata will get the first person, as she goes to get the first person to ask question, remember we're not giving you our microphone. We are going to hold the microphone when you ask our question, we take it back. All right? So, Mrs. Fatmat, are you ready? Yes, I am. So, we're going to make it easy, right? Two on the side and two from this one, right? So, we're going to start. Let's we, we okay, hold on. first. It's going to be a female. Okay, yes. It's going to be a female. And. No, I'll pick a female, and he will pick a male. He's going to be on that row, and I'll be here. Um, first... Yeah, VOS, Voice of Salo. Television, yes. Okay. My name one, is Wara Ture. I am from Bo. Okay. I've been here for 46 years now. Back in you. My concern is, I've been a teacher in Montgomery County here for 24 years. And I'm concerned why kids are failing in Sierra Leone. People are talking about nurses, but they've not really tried to tap about teachers. You need American trained teachers, probably. Sierra Leoneans, I mean, not Americans, who have experience, who can deal with the uh, Sierra Leone issue and the American experience to see why that is happening. What can we do? change things. So think about the teachers, not only nurses. I always say they are nurses, nurses, nurses. All right. Uh, we're going to take that. We'll take Dr. Nabek quickly. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Mohamed Nabi. Uh, this question is uh, going for our Vice President. You know, I'm the Chairman of the Sierra Leone Progressive Union. We've been in existence for 25 years. Uh, we started with educational support to uh, schools in Sierra Leone, especially at universities. We've extended our program in helping build chairs and desks for schools in Sierra Leone. We donated to uh, the military school, the police school. Last year we did in Bo, Kenema, and Freetown. My question to you is, there are so many organizations here who want to help to build Sierra Leone. What have you to offer? For somebody who can walk to Sierra Leone and want to help, what options does the person have to do that? So we're going to take all the questions. You need one more lady from uh, a gentleman from here, and uh, we'll give military a chance. Yeah. Ah, His Excellency. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Mr. Minister of Energy, good evening, sir, and ambassadors of protocol. I speak from my heart. I have been in this country since 1972, before and most of you guys were born. But let me tell you, when I tell you I speak from my heart, because I'm not SLPP. Kanja knows that. I'm not APC. Mr. Bundu knows that. I'm a Sierra Leonean. I have been with every ambassador that has come to this country, except Ambassador Weir. And I know he's wondering, why military? Why haven't you come? But I tell you why. Because 2017, we had a big problem in Sierra Leone, the mudslide. And Ambassador Stevens called us up and said, come, let's, let's see what we can do. We had a meeting. I took Ambassador Stevens to New York and they gave us a container of medication and medical supplies. 
It's still sitting at the pots. It is a shame. I give the shame to APC government, 70%, and I give the shame to SABB government, 30%. You know why? Because it's transition. When a government comes in, it takes over what the government has done. Please remember, you said it is very important for us, the diaspora, because we support, I didn't support my mother. Terence Terry was my brother, he supported my mother. But I support people in Sierra Leone. Ambassador Ria, I will come, I have spoken my heart. One more question and I'll give it to this young gentleman. First of all, my name is uh, Adas Patiko. My question here is simply this. The Vice President has echoed consistently the effort and the support of diaspora back home. Now, Ambassador, now the Vice President, we are asking for a friendly investment policy for the diasporans who want to invest home. Yes. I think we've done it all. That's my question. Please, please convey this message that we need an investment friendly for diasporans who wants to come back home and invest. Thank you, sir. Can Thank we not allow the VP to answer those four questions? Because we need to leave this auditorium by 7 p.m. Right. If we do have more time, then we're going to take two more questions. Okay. Your Excellency, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vandy. I will, I will start with the question of the teachers. I totally agree with you. When we declared free education, we called it free quality education. So here there are two things. It's a problem of access and a problem of quality we have to address at the same time. To address quality, we are currently in the process of recruiting 5,000 teachers. 5,000 teachers. And I totally agree with you that we should not only focus on bringing expertise from the diaspora only in the health sector, but we can also tap into other sectors. But we have to start somewhere. And we want to start with the most urgent ones, that those are the ones that are already well-placed, they already have a network, they are already going to Sierra Leone. I think just this afternoon, we agreed that we are going to revitalize the diaspora office in Sierra Leone, so that at the end of the day, we'll be able to tap into those. I totally agree with you. We are recruiting 5,000 teachers as a result to just improve quality. Because if you have more kids in school, you need more teachers to take care of them. But we are going to tap into your expertise in other areas other than just the health sector. What can you offer for people who want to help Sierra Leone? That is also linked to the question our sister who spoke from her heart on the medical equipment. Already in Sierra Leone, we have established the National Investment Board. The National Investment Board is chaired by the president and co-chaired by myself. And the infrastructure of that board is situated in my office. Like I said, when you want to improve the economy, you want to encourage foreign direct investment into your country, you need to put the structures in place to do that. So already that board is a one-stop shop for anybody who wants to come to Sierra Leone. In addition to that, people who want to go and invest, because you have two range. You have those who want to go and support the social sector to providing humanitarian work or build schools or support the hospitals, they're in a different category. Those ones, we have different category. Now, for those ones who want to invest in Sierra Leone, we have the National Investment Board as one-stop shop. Currently, it is working in its advisory capacity because we have passed it in parliament, in, at cabinet level, we are yet to pass it in parliament, but now it is still functioning. In that regard, we are establishing special economic zones. People who want to come and do business, for example, if you want to open a factory that is going to create employment, 
in certain key sectors, we can provide tax concessions for you. We are already providing land, free land, for people who want to build hospitals. We are already providing free land for people who want to build, who want to build poultry, who want to, who want to engage in agriculture. These are some of the concessions. We are also going to reduce your taxes and maybe give you a period of time so that as a small industry, for you to be competitive, we thought that we create a tax space for you so that you operate for a couple number of years before you begin to pay tax. <laughs> we have all of this. It is part of our doing business project. We are investing, we are providing the resources, we are putting in place the rule regulations so that at least to encourage people to come. For those Sierra Leoneans who want to support and help, essentially along social axis, meaning like our sister for the medical equipment, I think I feel very bad about that. That is a very sad event. When you have people work very hard and try to support a country, those equipment should not be stopped at the port. Over the years, people have been over utilizing the duty waivers. People come with a lot of goods and they say they are humanitarian goods and they don't pay tax. So as a result, there was a very strict regime in place to be able to screen those ones. But for medical equipment that are certified, believe you me, we are going to do everything possible if I have those papers to get those medical equipment out so that they can reach to the intended beneficiaries. For the diasporas who want to invest, I think I've already answered that when I was answering number two. But be rest assured, when you talk about foreign direct investment, especially if you're in a country like America that's a capitalist-oriented country, liberal market, you cannot stop other people from not coming to invest in your country. But nevertheless, we are going to give you priority because you know the market, you know the ground, and you know the terrain. This investment board, apart from the fact that it is a one-stop shop, we have established what we call the investment dialogue. So His Excellency the President, with top cabinet ministers from time to time, invite investors to launch where we can discuss some of the obstacles that are bringing down investments in Sierra Leone and try to address them. But also, we are working with international financial institutions to provide credit line to our banks so that the lending rates, credit rate, will be low. At, as of now, it is very high and it is killing a lot of domestic business. But we are working on that. Be rest assured that uh, when you come to invest in Freetown, if you go to the investment board, it is in my office, I will see you, then I will recognize you, then we will organize it. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Uh, just, just uh, Mr. Vice President, just one more thing. I'm a media person. And uh, I cannot sit and see a Sierra Leonean media in the house, and I don't give them an opportunity. So please, bear with me. It's going to take just one minute. The Voice of Sierra Leone Television. It's a national slash international network. Your Excellency, this is a civil liberty question. Recently, I on my Voice of Salon Television Network, I spoke about the rule of law and freedom of speech. Uh, Sierra Leoneans saw a video making rounds on social media uh, wherein a popular comedian by the name of Pupa making mockery of the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Uh, right after that, he was arrested. Mr. Vice President, my question to you, how would you guarantee the freedom of speech of Sierra Leonean? Thank you. Th thank you very much. First of all, I thought in the first place we are going to congratulate my government for this seditious libel act we have decided to expunge. The 1965 Public Order Act, the Seditious Libel Act, which was the act that, that over the years since independence, government has been using to arrest people for free speech we have decided to abolish it. That is a very, very important step. 
towards civil liberty and freedom of speech. Isolated cases, we are in. Everybody is free to talk in Senegal. We are not clamping down on journalists. We have papers, social media, everything. But there is a fine line between freedom of speech, not only propaganda, freedom of speech, and being disrespectful of authority. Authority is authority. Freedom of speech is freedom of speech. The way you address a sitting president is different from the way you address an ordinary Sierra Leonean. Because sitting president is the excellency, is the grand chief commander of the Republic of Sierra Leone. He is the symbol and founding honor of the Republic of Sierra Leone. So how you address him is very important. So we want to send this message that everybody is free to talk about the policies. Anybody can say free quality education policy is not good. You will not be arrested. But let people be mindful of attacking individuals, whether they are politicians or they are not politicians. You can attack the policy but not the individual. And you should show utmost respect for the authority of the state. Yes. I think that is what is in play. But Sierra Leone today, if you look, the scorecard of the MCC, we are rated. We passed the scorecard for civil liberties and ruling justice. That is because of what we have been doing and the fact that today no journalist will be arrested for what they are just saying. But I, I give you a simple example. In Kafubulom district, where I come from, uh, my parents come from Kafubulom, you have a local radio presenter who normally goes to the radio and just talk. One day, he was making a mockery of the vice president coming to his hometown. <laughs> By the time the guy could leave the station, you have like over 400 people waiting for him outside to beat him up. <laughs> I was called in Freetown to save the situation. When I came, I told them in Kafu Block, I have thousands of supporters. So how you address me, you have to be very careful. Because I'm not going to send them to beat you up. But if you insult somebody that they admire, they are going to beat you up. So sometimes we cannot control all of our supporters. You understand that? That is why we are asking you for excessive caution, the way you address us. Address us with uh, some element of amount of respect, fear enough. But be rest assured that today, with the social media, with the radio stations, all over the country, and I don't believe that there is any journalist in Sierra Leone today that is under fear. They investigate, they write, they publish. On several occasions, people have told me, journalists have written about me, that I have turned diamond to sto stone to diamond. Yeah. Diamond to stone. Yeah. We never arrested the journalist. We never arrested the journalist. I read that, I read that. You read that? Yes. Just, just to tell you that we accept free speech. That is why we are scored internationally very high for that. But also to caution people that attacking, if there is a law against attacking individuals, the preservation of their respect, there is a law to a wider readership to defamate what is going to happen for them. No, he's asking for an interview. That's what he wants, he's asking for. You already have this. You can hear this. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you.